so it's another gorgeous day here in the Goat Rock Forest Garden. A little chilly this morning, but starting to warm up. Things are looking pretty good. I've been working a lot on this area. Uh, next to this hugel. And this area over here by this really cool mossy rock. So initially when we first started this forest garden around six years ago, um, this whole area was a pasture for goats. Um, but we brought in some pigs to rip up the whole area and then chickens later um, to kind of further, you know, loosen the soil and fertilize the soil. Um, and then we had, and then we built some, you know, simple structures. We had these little micro swales over here that fed into a channel that ran all the way down to the pond over there where we had a few ducks. Um, and, you know, we we're pretty inexperienced, but the thought was that excess water would flow down the channel into the pond and fill the pond. But, um, you know, that only happens like once or twice a year during really heavy rains, usually in early spring um, when the water table is really high and there's a lot of snow and ice melting. Um, so I've, I've seen this channel flow and be full of water, but it doesn't last very long. You know, it sort of collects over here and then drains out within a few hours. Um, so then you know, for the past few years, I've been telling myself that, oh, this channel is, you know, a feature that creates more diversity of habitat. You know, there's a little bit more of a terrain thing. And like, these are kind of shady, moist areas. So there were different plants growing in it. Um, but it was just kind of a fun feature, right? We had these cool bridges. Um, and it just kind of gave the effect of a little stream or something running through the, the garden even though you know there isn't actually running water most of the time um, but now sort of I've been rethinking this whole concept um, for a number of reasons um, one is this area over here where the channel um, ran right next to this fire pit right so the channel was like right here and it was like a foot deep and you know we were out here with a fire and someone fell and rolled their ankle in the in the trench which I kind of saw coming and so I've been wanting to rework this area anyway but you know after gaining all this experience in different climates from Hawaii to here and sort of learning a lot more about you know water management on a site like this I've come to realize that we don't really want a steep channel to carry water you know from one areas to the next what we would probably prefer to do is to slow spread soak retain the water um, during those peak rainfall events so um, rather than having this steep channel that just cuts down and you know like this incised channel um, i've been reworking this area so that there's like these little micro swales, little micro basins. Um, I don't know if you can really tell, but like this area where I've dug up the grass, um, you know, I've really tried to just smooth things out so that people don't trip in the middle of the night when we have a fire, um, but also so that water collects in these little basins here. Um, so, so far I've created three little micro basins. There's, there's one up here by this propagation table, very small one. And then when that's full, you know, it only collects about a few inches of water, but it's quite a few, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a large volume of water when you think about it. Uh, but once that one's full, it drains around the side and then, you know, fills this one, which then drains around the side and fills this one. And then I, I might just keep going down. Um, so that way a lot more water is being retained on the landscape. So yeah, it runs down, fills this up, and kind of backs up into there 
where I planted or I transplanted these two black locust plants. Um, so they'll benefit from, you know, this extra moisture. And then these blueberry plants on this side of this rock will also benefit. So, you know, all this water that collects in here should soak into the ground, into this area. And then when that's full, it'll overtop here and kind of do the same thing in this little micro basin and on and on and on. Um, and, you know, collectively that should retain a huge amount, a huge volume of water and recharge, you know, groundwater in this area, really hydrate the soils, um, you know, cause that moisture plume in the ground will accumulate year after year and it'll start to grow. And over time it'll migrate down slope, perpendicular to slope into all of this, you know, got this oak, got a uh, pear, um, got rhubarb, you know, and then it'll further be retained down here in the next kind of swale of this um, hoogle. So, you know, but overall, it's just kind of a tweak of the organizational structure in here. Trying to make things a little less hazardous at night when people are you know, enjoying a fire um, so they don't accidentally like fall back and break their ankle. Um, you know, cause this is like kind of the one central area that is kind of like a gathering spot, you know, that's why it's mowed grass and, um, you know, trying to create like a more wide open area where potentially a dozen, maybe even two dozen people could hang out. Um, you know, but there's also sort of like a decentralized system of like benches and rocks that people can sit on, um, you know, little more private spots where one or just a handful of people can hang out. Uh, just, those are just kind of scattered all over. Um, but we kind of need like one central area where the community can, uh, you know, enjoy, um, yeah, I really think instead of having this steep incised channel that ran all the way up, having these little micro basins that fill and then overflow and fill and overflow and really slow and make the path of, that the water has to take really long, um, you know, and this is going to hook up to swales that are back there and I can extend these little micro basins kind of all throughout so that the path that water takes on this landscape is very circuitous, very long and winding um, so that you know during those peak rainfall events where there's a lot of runoff uh, the water isn't just suddenly flowing down a single channel um, you know it's actually being retained on the landscape and soaking in slowly and if there is a huge excess it, it will still be able to run down you know there's an overflow system so and that will still probably lead to the pond. Um, but I've sort of realized that like with the liner, this pond, it doesn't need to be filled with like, you know, channelized water and all that. But it is kind of a cool, you know, organizational concept to have a whole network of channels, swales, etc., that lead to the pond. You know, that, that makes sense. Um, so, and I've actually seen, you know, during super heavy rain, this whole channel full of water. Um, there's a video um, on my channel, check it out. Um, but the way this works is that this pond is actually slightly higher. So when, the, when it's raining really hard, the pond overflows down into here and water comes down into the channel. And then when this part is full, it overtops. And then I haven't figured out what is going to happen, but I think it's just kind of, you know, exit onto the field. Yeah, so what I'm working on today 
is continuing to work on this little micro swale basin complex around this fire pit. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Give me any suggestions or ideas or criticisms or, you know, anything you got. I'm open to it.